Okay, let's think about where deep learning works really well. We've seen a bunch of examples and some of the limitations which we'll be addressing this week of where it works less well. So first of all, for fun, let's look at global investment in the last year or so in deep learning. Where is the money flowing in? 2020 in purple compared to 2019 in blue. And interestingly, the biggest move right now is drugs, cancer, molecular design, drug discovery. But there's still a lot of money flowing into autonomous vehicles, to education, machine translation, fraud prevention, lots of the classic pieces. Note this is venture capital. We're not talking about Tencent and Amazon and the well-established big players, but lots of applications, lots of investment in a variety of application areas. Um, for example, companies like IBM doing antimicrobial discovery, combinations of deep generative models, think like GANs, and molecular dynamics. So very much focused, applied, embed the deep learning into a broader context and use it for something that can make money, because of course it's companies investing money. But thinking sort of more Generally, what have we seen? We've seen really good CNNs for recognizing, is this a fish, is this furniture, is this food? Object recognition works great. What we haven't looked at much is things like scene recognition. Is this a kitchen? What's in it? Is this an office? Find the computer in it, find the relations. Is there someone using the computer? So a lot of work happening right now going beyond objects to sets of objects and scenes and what's happening. We've seen how to do machine translation. Mostly it looks pretty cool. The boy hit the ball with the bat. Oh, except yeah, a lot of you speak Chinese. There's something funny about that Bianvu, pardon my terrible pronunciation. There are different kinds of bats. There are baseball bats and there are winged mammalian, mammal bats, animals. Google still sometimes doesn't quite get the right context in spite of using beautiful transformer models just like we used. But mostly it works really well, and that's the least of its problems. We saw examples before where if you're translating, for example, from Hungarian, which does not have genders required to English, you get things like the neutral, someone is beautiful, someone is clever, she is beautiful, he is clever. So we've seen these problems of built-in bias based on statistics in the training language. These are gradually getting better. Each year Google improves these a bit, but they're still by, not, by no means perfect. What we also see when we look at scene captioning, take an image, import it with a CNN to a deep representation, then use a LSTM for a decoder or a transformer for a decoder, what you see is that often it does sort of good. It's a group of people standing next to a man in a suit and a tie. Awesome. It's got what's there, but it's missing what's going on. It doesn't really understand the scene. It knows statistically what sort of labels or things are there. What's happening? Is this guy getting fitted for a suit? What is the action? So the labeling we get tends to be very superficial, missing the idea, the concept of what's happening. If you look at where deep learning works, one way of caricaturing it is the one second rule, that most of deep learning currently works in things that humans could do in a few seconds. Recognize, is this a cat or a dog? Which of my friends is this? Caption an image translate a sentence, pick where do I move the joystick right now in the video game. Mostly these are short perceptual, quick reactions. They're not deep understanding of causality or the world of what's going on. They're not extended anything, right? Quick reactive pieces. We haven't quite got the deep place. And one thing I'd like to explore this week is how to get computers closer to doing things that humans are good at. So here's a typical sort of, of intelligence test, IQ test. You see the top thing, there are two yellow stars and that goes to three yellow stars. If we have four blue dots, what do we expect to see? 
Now, you've probably never seen a task like this. Okay, sort of like them, because you've taken SAT scores or some sort of things, maybe even a Raven's IQ test. These look like IQ tests. But you're quite good at zero-shot learning, recognizing that this is similar in some way, figuring out what objects are, figuring out what matters or doesn't matter. Does the star shape matter? Does the blue matter? Does the number? Oh, where's the number? All you get is pixels. So somehow you can see that, yeah, probably the right answer is A, five blue dots. This notion that you have learned very abstractly that there are objects that you can count them, you can have the process of adding one to it. Note that our current AI systems, our current deep learning systems are crappy at this. And a cool thing we'll explore today is how they might get better at it.